my name is Chris Romano and I am the product manager for Purge Pressurization Products here at Pepperone Fuchs. Today I will give some insight on how our pressure relief vents work and help potential and existing customers select the proper vent for their application. This also corresponds with a white paper that we did and it's available on our website as a free download. So what is and why do we need a pressure relief vent when purging or pressurizing an enclosure? Well, there are two main factors. One is purging the hazardous gas out of the enclosure. And during operation, if the pressure gets too high, you want to release that pressure from inside the enclosure. So when you're purging an enclosure, you assume that uh, during start um, that the enclosure is at atmospheric pressure and hazardous gas is within the enclosure. You need to purge out that hazardous gas with a high flow rate of uh, you know, uh, air or inert gas that's clean uh, and replace it with the hazardous gas. In order to do that, you need a pressure relief vent. You need something for that air to flow through uh, to, to escape out of the enclosure. After you're finished purging it, then all you have to do is pressurize it. Now, during pressurization, it's pretty much sealed. However, you still need a pressure relief device on there in case the uh, regulator fails, which usually fails open, or um, somebody adjusts the pressure too high. Uh, you don't want that enclosure, square enclosure turning around. So you need to release that. Um, so with that, we have different types of vents at Pepperon Folks that we designed and will operate for purge pressurization systems. Here at Pepperone Folks, we designed these types of vents here for pressure relief. Uh, this happens to be two different styles of vents. Um, this particular one is a Zone 1, Division 1 uh, Type X uh, purge uh, vent. And this one is a Z purge, uh, Division 2 or Zone 2 uh, pressure relief vent. Now you can see there's a difference here. One's bigger. This one, Division 1, is bigger. And the reason why is because there's a, a pressure sensor and a flow sensor inside this device that's intrinsically safe. And it communicates the pressure and the flow through this vent back to the 6,000 or 6,500 control unit. The uh, line back to it is intrinsically safe. And this is required by the ICEX and the ATEX certification. They require measuring flow at the exhaust. Now for a zone two or division two area, you don't have to measure it at the exhaust, but you need to, to release the pressure. And the way we measure the flow is by uh, the control unit, the 5500, 7500 series control unit has a pressure sensor in there that measures the enclosure pressure. And this relates to the enclosure pressure relates to the flow rate through this particular vent. Now the vents, uh, they look different, and this has the pressure flow sensor. This is pretty much static. However, the uh, mechanics behind them are the same. So what we developed was these two vents, and again, this one has the pressure sensor and the flow sensor inside there, intrinsically safe and static. This is where uh, the comparison ends. Uh, otherwise, mechanically, they're identical. So inside these vents, and we'll show this vent for all three units, we have a type of release device inside here for, for the braking pressure and purging out the gas. This particular unit has a flapper and it has a spring inside there. And we can put one spring and two springs. We call that the single and the double spring flapper type of unit. Now, when you put two springs in there, it provides more tension on the plate, which uh, provides a better seal when it's operating. And the plunger has an actual O-ring inside here that um, will provide a better seal and a, has a heavier spring for uh, a higher braking pressure and a better seal for leakage during operation. Now, for the for the use here, the single spring and the double spring, the double spring was actually designed to provide the better seal before we had the plunger. Now we developed the plunger style, which gives you the best seal uh, for leakage. 
So really, the double spring isn't really used that much anymore. So for the purpose of this uh, presentation, we will talk about the single spring and the plunger style. And you will see that there's really no reason to buy or order or use the double spring one. It's basically the single and the plunger style. Now with these vents, um, because of that spring, they are um, universally oriented. So gravity doesn't really play a part in here. So you can actually mount this on the top side or the bottom. You can even mount this inside the enclosure uh, by removing the cap, putting the body inside and then the cap as you see in the, the diagram. So it's very universally mounted. You always, and this cap rotates so that you could always have these openings uh, away from the water or not facing up. Um, so that's a little bit about the mounting of the units. Now with these vents, uh, there are three parameters that are of interest for purging and pressurization. There's the purge flow through uh, the vents, and then there's the break in pressure. This is when the vent begins to open up and release the pressure inside the enclosure. And then the leakage pressure, which is basically after you're purging the enclosure, you're just pressurizing the enclosure and compensating for leakages. And this pressure is usually below the break in pressure, uh, however, even though it's below the breaking pressure, you still have a little bit of pressure on those, that flap or a plunger, and it will leak a little bit. So these three parameters we will talk about. For the purge flow, as you can see on the graph, that the single spring has the highest flow rate and the lowest enclosure pressure. And the plunger one, you can see that as the um, flow rate increases, uh, the enclosure pressure increases quite a bit higher than the single spring. So with that you you can select it accordingly to the size of the enclosure. For breaking pressure they're basically the same. Uh, the breaking pressure is between 0.9 and 1.1 inch water pressure and the leakage pressure as you can see in this table um, you can see that the plunger style seals much much better than the single spring. Now, when you're selecting a vent um, with those parameters, you take a look at a large and small enclosure. So let's consider a large enclosure. Let's say it's over 30 cubic foot uh, in volume. The best choice for that would be probably the single spring uh, design. Um, and the reason why this is because of a larger enclosure, you want to have a higher flow rate to uh, turn down your purge time. So you want the least amount of time for purging. How, and, and also with that single spring uh, vent, the purge pressure will be lowest. Um, however, the leakage through the vent is, is the greatest uh, of, the, of the two designs. Now, the, the reason why the single spring is better is because um, because of the higher flow rate and the lower enclosure pressure, that's less force on the walls and the door of the enclosure. Because it does increase quite a bit, even though we're talking inches of water uh, column, which relate to a PSI, pounds per square inch, the greater the surface area, the greater force on that door. So you always want to keep that purge pressure lower, as low as possible. Now, um, the leakage rate is higher. However, when you talk about a large enclosure, you usually have a lot of leakage around the doors, uh, windows, cable glands, and so on. Even though it's a NEMA 4 IP66 enclosure, they still leak. And the larger the enclosure, the more it will leak. The smaller enclosure um, usually is good for uh, the plunger style. And I'm talking smaller enclosures as well as nitrogen-based purge systems. Um, the purge time is greater, but we're talking about smaller enclosures. So the purge time really isn't that much different than the single spring. It, uh, it does give you a higher um, enclosure pressure for purging, but again, it's a smaller enclosure, less uh, square inches on the surface of the enclosure, so there's less force on there. So you, could, you can withstand a much higher force or much higher enclosure pressure inside the enclosure. The leakage rate is at the lowest. And for nitrogen-based systems, this is very good for uh, asphyxiation in closed areas. 
it provides you the best seal. And it also provides you a best seal on pricing for the cost of air. So let's talk about the cost of air a little bit. Um, Typically, the cost of air is about 28 cents per 1,000 cubic foot of air. Now, that's not a lot, and if you take a look at an enclosure, let's say you're pressurizing that at 0.75 inch water pressure below the braking pressure, and uh, you're, per, you're pressurizing that for 24 hours a day, 365 days out of the year. The O1 vents at 0.75 inch water pressure, at 0.28 inch or 0.28 dollars per thousand cubic foot of air will cost about $145 per year to run that because of the leakage just through the vent, not through the enclosure, just through the vent. The same vent, or the I should say the same enclosure with the plunger style, um, basically 24 hours, $365 a day, at that cost is gonna be about $55 per year. Now that doesn't seem like a lot, but when you add up the number of purge systems in your facility, um, the cost of air starts adding up. So you must consider that as well. For more details, information on our EPV vents, please download our white paper on choosing vents. Also, please visit our website for more purge pressurization products along with our hazardous uh, protection products as well. Thank you for watching and please like and share this video.